Hello and welcome to today's Go Anteater podcast. We hope that you are having a wonderful day today. Thank you for tuning in. And today we're going to go over some, uh, just some information when it comes to different insects. The one that we're going to be covering today is bed bugs. So today I want to welcome um, our, gu- our guest today. So I'm going to turn it over to him and let him take it over. Our guest. I work here. Uh, <laughs> my name is Travis Gates. I am uh, the guy who teaches classes here and helps run training for ABC, Home and Commercial Services, in Dallas, Texas, <laughs> Louisville, Texas, Fort Worth, Texas, North Texas. Yeah, yeah. Which, whichever one Russell's in charge of, that's, <laughs> that's the one I'm doing. And uh, yeah, I'm an entomologist and random bug fact nerd. For so, sure. For that's sure. why I'm here. <laughs> Well, today we wanted to cover um, bed bugs, so I was gonna like open the floor, let you kind of just go ahead and start running right into it. <laughs> bed bugs in general, um, yeah, I think bed bugs have been around for uh, quite some time. Honestly, um, the idea that bed bugs kind of shifted to humans as a food source um, as a branch off of bat bugs is kind of the the running theory at the moment. Um, so essentially, we think about it as early human ancestors. We were taking shelter in caves and things like that where bats were already sheltering. And some of the insects that had developed to feed on bats went, hmm, maybe there's something juicier downstairs. So they crawl down. They start feeding on humans and say, this is way easier. There's less hair to get through, <laughs> things like that. And uh, they kind of just shift gears and uh, start using us as a primary food source. So we can say essentially that bed bugs have been living alongside and feeding on humans pretty much as long as we recognize humans as humans. Right. So, yeah, it's uh, it's been a while. They're kind of good at what they do. Yeah. Um, you know, and all of human history, uh, people, there's actually people who collect. I had a professor who collects um, old, like, postcards and art okay. of bed bugs from, like, the 1600s and wow. things like that. Because bed bugs have just been ever present, right? Of course. So there were jokes about bed bugs and all kinds of stuff. Um, and the fact that we've been creating art and documenting their their presence with us for that long kind of shows you their significance as a pest for humans. Right. Um, obviously, anything that feeds on us is going to be something people take notice of. You know, just a little bit, a right? A little bit. Yeah, our yeah. ectoparasites, things that feed on the outside of a host. Um, so bed bugs are very much an ectoparasite for us um luckily they don't burrow in they don't attach themselves they take their blood meal they run back to a hidey hole and they digest for a little bit and then they'll show back up a little bit later to catch their next blood meal right so uh it is a a cyclical feeding it's not a living on the host situation where we think of things like mites uh maybe even ticks which will anchor temporarily fleas which prefer to live on the host uh lice which like to live on the host and actually don't live off of the host very long so, you know, it's it's one of the better ectoparasites. And we also add to the fact that it's one of the bigger ectoparasites. It's actually more obvious. And I think that's something we have a lot of confusion on from people in that we've got people who you go into their home or business and you say, we're going to come in and inspect for bed bugs. And they don't know how you're going to do it because they're like, well, how do you see them? Right. Well, yeah, a bed bug is basically the size and shape of an apple seed. So an adult bed bug is going to be just under a quarter of an inch long. They're going to be kind of shaped like an apple seed, wide at one end, narrow at the other. Um, And kind of a reddish brown to golden brown color. Mm -hmm. It depends on whether they fed recently. Um, And then any of the immature bed bugs will be basically the exact same shape, just a little bit smaller right. as you go down the sizes. <laughs> right. So um, they're all feeding on blood. Blood is the only thing that our bed bugs are going to feed on through their entire life cycle. So they also shed their exoskeletons and leave those behind as evidence because they can't eat that and recycle that nutrient, which other insects tend to do. So they're leaving behind evidence in the form of the blood waste that's coming out the back end and those shed skins. So we're looking for those things, plus the fact that You've got a bed bug that's a quarter of an inch long cruising around. Right. So they aren't quite as sneaky as I think some people assume them to be. Um, But, you know, there is still plenty of confusion just because an insect is on your bed doesn't mean it's a bed bug. For sure. Right? And the fact that bed bugs don't only get around beds. Mm -hmm. So we've got kind of mixed messages that I think people have gotten just depending on where they've gotten their information before. Oh, for sure. Well, and I know with like... um 
bed bugs they they kind of have to have a motive of transportation to go from one location to another from one host to another yeah um and i know like at the the height of covid when everything was shut down people weren't traveling as much i know that overall the people were saying that there was a decrease in overall bed bug population potentially because you don't have the airline hotels being utilized as much what are your thoughts on that so we did see some differences in bed bug activity during that time we actually got some people who reported more bed bugs um, they had bed bugs already and they were just home now for a longer period of time where they actually started to notice them or the bed bugs got to feed enough that they started to reproduce more um, so it was something that was pre-existing and they just kind of amplify it by being present and seeing the issue um, but we did see a decrease in a lot of places because we stopped traveling as much. Right, right. And if we really go back to it, um, you know, bed bugs were present in the U.S. for a long time. Mm-hmm. They were here, they were here, they were here. And then we got World War One. We got some chemical weapons programs that developed, some failed chemical weapons that we turned into pesticides. And we started some of our synthetic pesticide development and DDT is kind of a big history maker. It's a big bookmark as far as pesticides go. For sure, for but sure. But essentially, we used DDT for this big chunk of time, and it killed bed bugs. And we used it in everything. Um, DDT was used in sheets and wallpaper, crib liners, all kinds of stuff. So we wiped out the bed bugs in the U.S. for the most part. Um, and we continued to use DDT like up until the late 60s, early 70s. Um, and then... People started traveling some more. Right. So we had this break from bed bug populations, and it took people traveling more frequently, more readily to these other areas of the world where bed bugs were still in decent populations. And then they start hitchhiking. And because they've adapted to live with humans, they hitchhike rather well. Right. And that could be in your clothes, treads of your shoes, your luggage, whatever it is, right? So I would say kind of early aughts, we started seeing bed bugs show up more often in kind of major population centers, especially mm-hmm. areas where we had big international airports. Right. Um, from there, they've spread into other, obviously, major cities first because we have more people, more movement. Um, and then they're out in outlying areas. Mm-hmm. I mean, I, I've given a talk about bed bugs in Midland, right? Nothing lives in Midland. <laughs> right. <laughs> we, we had to talk about bed bugs because they moved out that far, right? But we've got a lot of people who travel out there for work with the mm-hmm. oil and gas industry. So we're carrying these things wherever we're going. For sure. Um, so we, we definitely saw kind of a flux in activity just because with less travel, we had less movement bringing things in. Right. 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 Um, but overall, I'd say bed bug populations, honestly, are holding pretty strong. Um, and... Some of that is either people who are not getting things treated or people who can't afford the treatments or it could just be ineffective treatment. Mm-hmm. So, you know, there's there's still options out there where if you go in and do the lazy thing and just, oh, I'll just spray around the baseboard or whatever, you're not going to fix the problem. So we've got these populations that hold on and all it takes is that one kid, you know, at school to bring his bag and now they move to the other lockers. Or I think I was talking to someone recently who they work at a hospital same thing. There's a locker room at the hospital. People put their stuff there. They've had some movement of bed bugs and roaches from people's lockers where they're bringing things from home. And that's really what we're going to see. Most of our movement is shared areas, right. common spaces. Right. Right. Um, but anywhere people spend time. Oh, yeah. So we think about it. We always put it on hotels and things like that. Right. Everyone wants to check the hotel. Um, and, you know, you're going to get a small percentage of rooms in a hotel that will have activity. Um, and it doesn't matter what type of hotel it is, right? Oh, super yeah. expensive, super cheap. There's a good chance there's activity just because people bring things in. Yeah, motel, um, hotel, bed bugs don't care. Exactly. And it's not going to be necessarily, you know, this huge wall crawling amount of bed bugs, <laughs> but all it takes is three or four, and then those can spread to another person. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, we, we get that kind of activity in most of those spaces. Um, but we think about things like uh, movie theaters, right? You go, you sit with your stuff, you spend a few hours there, and then you leave. Well, bedbugs can live in those seats. For sure. People bring them with them and leave them behind for the next moviegoer. Um, cruise ships, uh, any of your public transportation, you know, buses, trains, airplanes, all of those things can have bedbug activity. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, there was a, a number of years ago a flight, a uh, British Airways flight, I believe, that the flight crew refused to fly on the plane because there were visible bedbugs on the plane. So, I mean... 
it takes a lot of movement to have visible activity oh, for like sure. that. So we, we get issues like that where, again, people spend time. So, yeah, don't limit yourself. The bed bugs can show up all over the place. <laughs> well, and if your skin isn't itching yet, maybe you have a few pointers that you can give for certain people. Because I know listening to this, there's going to be that effect where people are listening to this going, oh, my gosh, now I itch. Do I have bed bugs? So what would be some things that you would point out for them to keep an eye out for traveling at home or any of the above? I mean, I would say anytime you travel, it's worth being a little more wary mm -hmm. um, just because you're going into spaces you're not used to being in. Uh, you know, if you're at home and things like that, you're going to have your defenses pretty low. Even if you're going back and forth to work, even if you do have a locker room at work or something like that, I wouldn't worry about it enough that I'm being really cautious and checking things all the time. But, you know, when you change the sheets, check the bed. See if maybe there's something that doesn't look quite right. Um, I will say my wife and I travel, and when we travel places, I do check for bed bugs, but it's a cursory check, Same. right? I'm not completely dismantling the bed and right. things like that, Same but here. I'm going to pull the corners of the sheets back and look for any evidence. You know, I'm going to look, oh, well, there's a mattress encasement on this mattress. Why is that here, right? We, we can look for simple things, um, but I would say the, the easiest thing for people to look for is what they call salt and pepper, Right. Um, the salt is going to be those lighter colored exoskeletons from when they molt. And it'll be like these little kind of light brown to yellow flakes mm -hmm. almost is what they mm -hmm. look like. Um, and then the pepper is going to be the blood spots because whatever they're eating, the blood, they process what they want out of it. And the rest of it comes out the back end like blood. So on a hard surface, it creates kind of a raised scab, mm. almost like a hardened little bump. On a soft surface like a mattress, it wicks into the fabric and you get this rusty patch right and that can vary it can be kind of a brighter color usually not red right because obviously dried blood doesn't stay red but you'll get this kind of lighter brown through a rusty reddish color to a dark brown black um so those spots are actually pretty easy to pick up on for sure right and we think about it most mattresses and things are white mm -hmm. so it's it's an easy spot on a lot of those or you think a lot of hotel sheets and things those are going to be white right so they're they're pretty easy things to look out for mm -hmm. and again it's just a cursory check i'm going to pull things back if i notice something i'll dig a little deeper if i don't see anything right away there's a good chance there's no activity right there for sure right um but i will say check the bed check the upholstered chair that honestly every hotel room has a chair somewhere in there push back the pleated edges push back the edges around an armrest or something like that those are the edges we're looking at seams edges uh cracks and crevices mm -hmm. those are the spots where you're going to find the most activity for sure so if you can kind of give just a quick look at those things in the meantime i think the recommendation is people put their luggage in like the bathtub or the shower since some hotels don't have a tub anymore but the goal is, you know, that's an area where there's very little chance of bed bugs being present in that spot. So put your stuff over there while you give it a check, and then you can bring everything out. Absolutely. Um, even if you're staying long term at a hotel or something like that, general rule of thumb is to not unpack your bag into the dresser or the drawers or something like that, because you are kind of increasing your odds of something negative happening. Um, so keep your stuff in your bag, live out of your suitcase, you're traveling, you're going to be okay. Right. For sure, for sure. But, yeah, that's kind of how I do it when I go out. Same here. Just, yeah, it's it's a quick look. I mean, I could be super neurotic about it and check every little thing, but I'm usually tired when I get to a hotel, and I don't want to do all that extra. Right. So, quick look, go, eh, we're fine. The wife accepts it, and we move on, right? So, what else, what else do you, uh, what else is in your head about bed bugs that you'd like to share with everybody? Uh, I mean... I think, again, I mentioned the misconception that they're difficult to identify or difficult to inspect for. Um, I do know we've got companies out there that use bed bug sniffing dogs. Um, trained dogs can be trained to sniff bed bugs. It's like any other sniffing dog work. Basically, it's repetitive kind of refresher for the dog. Hey, mm -hmm. you want your dinner? Smell the bed bugs out, that kind of thing. Um, so it absolutely can work. Um, the issue we have is that you know, there's not a true standard, true set of rules to train those dogs right now. Um, they're working on it. I know the National Pest Management Association has been trying to push some stuff to help get a designated kind of dog training program for bed bug sniffing dogs out there. Um, but we do have, you know, things that happen sometimes where it's just a sniffing dog that isn't necessarily behaving and it can give you some false positives. 
Um, so having human eyes on hand to actually look for the true identifiers typically is going to be kind of the most effective way to really confirm for a sure. problem. Um, and you know, we think about it just with smell in a space. Yes, they can zero in on something, but if you have a huge shared space like a cubicle farm or something like that for an office, right, there's a lot of different edges and gaps and spaces there. So smell can kind of carry from this spot to that spot to this spot. So just putting eyes on tends mm -hmm. to be the best option. And, I mean, even someone who isn't necessarily a licensed pest control person, if you know what you're looking for, we'll be able to identify you can it. identify it. And all you really need to know at that point is, are there bed bugs or are there not bed bugs? Right. So, yeah. Um, I will mention there is a new product that's coming to market that's actually a kind of sampling kit. Hmm. Um, Enview is actually pushing that product. I think they've already launched it. But we helped kind of test that product. Um, and it's basically kind of a swab sample. You rub it along a surface where you're checking for bed bug activity. Right. And it works almost like a COVID test, right? We're going to swish the stuff around in the reagent and then drip it onto the little test strip. And it tells you, okay, there's evidence of recent bed bugs there. So there are some new tools that they're trying to bring to market to make it easier for people who may not be well-versed mm -hmm. in identifying the issue or inspecting for the issue to help figure it out. And uh, the hope is that things like hospitality... Um, can pick up on those sorts of tools. So maybe their housekeeping staff or maintenance staffs can use those things and just be able to get an idea of, hey, we need to not use this room this week or something like that. So, I mean, there there are some cool developments that are working out there in the world of bed bugs, um, And it's just to help everyone get ahead of this problem. For sure. Because if we really look at bed bugs right now they can carry about 30 different human pathogens. Wow. Right? And that includes things like hepatitis. That includes things like HIV. Right? And they're carrying those. They've been tested and proven to carry those things. They have not been shown to transmit any of them. But we have to say yet. Right? Because we're dealing with things that adapt and change. For sure. So the bed bug can change or the pathogen can change. And all it's going to take is one effective change to make that now start transmitting. And we would really like for that not to be the case. 100%. And even more so, I'd like to get ahead of a bed bug problem before I have the risk of it transmitting nasty things to people. Oh, for so, sure. So, you know, obviously as a pest control industry, we're interested in kind of trying to help people out and get rid of these things. So, yeah, I, you know, I think outside of just knowing what we're looking for and finding them, we also probably should talk about treatment, if mm -hmm. you're good with that. Yeah. Um, and treatment can happen in a variety of forms, right? And there's all kinds of different companies using all kinds of different methods. There's no one key thing that you have to do every time. Right. So that's why we've got all these different tools. They all work. We just have to use them the right ways, right? Um, for a long time, we used heat primarily as a bed bug treatment, um, really because when bed bugs kind of came back on the scene, we didn't really have products that we could use to apply to surfaces where bed bugs might be living. So, you know, it still took a while to get a product that was labeled even to be put on a mattress. Right. Because we think about it, any surface where people are going to stay in contact with that for an extended period of time, we've got to be mindful of, is it too toxic? Is it horrible? That kind of stuff. We don't want to affect people. For sure. Um, so it took a while to get these products out there that we could use in these spaces. Um so heat, essentially, if we heat up a space to a minimum of 130 degrees, we hold it there for at least an hour, that should kill all life stages of bed bugs, right? So eggs, nymphs, and adults. Um, so you could do that. We did for a while with the big old propane heaters, right? It looks like a jet engine. You hook it up to a giant propane tank, and it blasts heat at one end, and you use ducting to kind of run it around the house and fans to spread the heat around and you could heat up an entire house right oh yeah we got 2500 square feet of heat going on oh yeah and it takes all day oh yeah it took a long time right um there are bigger faster heaters now um i know there's all kinds of development on that side of the world too it's making the heaters more effective um, we've got electric heaters now that you mm -hmm. can use for things like hotel rooms where obviously I can't run a propane burning thing in a hallway in a hotel. Oh, you can't? It's not oh. good for the people sleeping. Oh, okay. There, okay. Unless they just like to continue sleeping there. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, you know, we have different tools to do the same job. Um, we've got even an inflatable heat chamber. It looks like a little bouncy house, but you crank that thing on and its little heater blows up the little chamber and then heats it up. 
So we can use that in cases where maybe we want to heat up like a specific couch or a recliner, something like that where maybe there's a lot of folds and edges that are difficult to treat. So heat still works, right? We're going to heat it up high enough and kind of let them cook. Mm -hmm. You know, the risk you run with heat is what if a spot doesn't get quite hot enough? Well, now you have things that survive, right? So typically heat was coupled with something like a conventional treatment mm -hmm. where we would go in and apply pesticides into areas of concern afterwards. Um, so obviously now that we have more products on the market for it, it's a little easier. We can target whatever we want with whatever product, depending on what the goal is. Right. So lots of different things to use for the same goal, right? Um, it's not always a good idea to apply a liquid all over a cloth surface because now we're risking mildews and things like that so okay maybe we put a mattress encasement on the mattress and trap things in right uh, maybe i puff some dust under the cracks and crevices mm -hmm. and use something dry in that sense so we have different tools to do the same job right um outside of heat and conventional treatment um there are some companies that will use things like uh cold um i know there's a company that makes a device that makes this uh kind of co2 snow and it almost looks like a fire extinguisher when you're using it. So it's blasting out a little cloud of white powdery stuff. Huh. Um, but that stuff is like negative 110 degrees. So it gets real cold. So it can kill them on contact, but you kind of have to hit them with it. Okay. Right? So if they're in little cracks and crevices, tucked they around corners, hide. they may not be contacted. But it can absolutely kill them if we have them out in the open. So, you know, it just depends on what the situation is as to what tool is really the optimal tool. Gotcha. Um, there are devices, like I mentioned, the mattress encasements. Mm -hmm. um, those are kind of just a way to make it so we don't necessarily have to treat a mattress. So I'll treat everything else, and then I don't have to apply any pesticide there. Um, the encasement is literally just a big fabric, you know, pouch that we zip up over the mattress where they can't get out. They can't get into it. So your mattress is essentially okay. Even if there were bed bugs still living on it, they're trapped inside. Now they will eventually die. Right. So we can protect the mattress. That thing stays on the mattress. Once it's on, leave it's it on. on. Yeah. Right? Yeah. We don't need to take it off in a couple of weeks and go, it should be fine. <laughs> um, bed bugs can survive quite a while without eating. So we can loop back to that. Um, we also have things like monitors, um, which we use to help make it easy to inspect for activity in the future. Um, so there's lots of different models of it. Some of them are a little kind of fiber, like woven, almost like a little ball of fibers, mm -hmm. and they just get tangled up in it. Um, we have some that we use that are little pitfall traps, so they can climb up the outside and they fall in. They can't get out. Um, we've got some that are little climb-up discs that actually go under the feet of the bed frame or the couch, and it's, a, it's also a pitfall, but they can climb up from the inside or the outside, and they get stuck in this little groove. So it just makes it so in the future we can look and go, ah, there's still bed bugs. We need to do something else. So those sorts of tools are just really helpful, again, for kind of long-term peace of mind. Right. So, yeah, there's, there's a lot of options out there now, um, and it really depends on the customer, depends on their situation. Um, you know, downsides of things like a heat treatment for a house is you essentially have to move out of your house, right? To make sure the heat can get into all the closets, you got to have the closet pretty empty, mm -hmm. right? Um, anything in the house that could be damaged by heat has to be removed. So candles and makeup and plants and all kinds of stuff, you got to take it all out. Mm -hmm. So it's really labor intensive for both the customer and then the people treating. So it ends up being expensive. It ends up being stressful. And honestly, bed bugs are stressful enough right? Oh, yeah. Like, one of the, the biggest threats with bed bugs is just isolation. Mm -hmm. So we think about the fact that, hey, if I've got bed bugs, you probably don't want to come hang out at my house, right? So likewise, I'm not coming to your house with your bed bugs. I can't do it, right? So people get kind of cut off from their friends and families, and they just don't want to mess with you until you can fix it. Well, if it's a $5,000 treatment to come out and treat your house, some people can't afford that, right? So um, we can do effective treatments with kind of a more straightforward conventional approach where we're coming in. It's more like classic pest control, right? We're inspecting. We're treating the areas where we find activity, and we're just getting hands on. Mm -hmm. So it takes time, um, but it's less work for the person who's already stressed out about it to do all the prep and everything else. Oh, right? for sure. So we've got a lot of options in our arsenal. Um, so people shouldn't, like be hopeless um i heard about it was a actually a member of one of my relatives now they're uh 
I guess my brother's wife's cousin. Um, he had bed bugs in his apartment in college and decided that he knew heat could kill them. So he bought a bunch of kerosene heaters off Amazon oh, and no. put them up all over his apartment and just ran them for like two days. Don't burn kerosene heaters in your home or especially your apartment where you don't own the building. Um, yes, it will heat things up, but it also is a huge fire risk as among other issues. So sure. yeah, don't do things like that. How Not did that one idea. turn out? Uh, he's still around. He's okay. still fine. We owe so any damage to the building? I don't know that he burned anything specific. I never got too much detail, but that was the whole plan, and he had already purchased all the heaters. So. Oh, jeez. Yeah. Um, hey. That's a case of, you know, calling the professionals to handle something. That right? might be a case. Yeah, yeah. And honestly, how much did you spend on the heaters? Probably like, just as much as... Yeah. yeah. Call someone who could just come out and do it. <laughs> right. So especially for an apartment, right? We uh, can handle it. 100%. But, yeah. There's... there's options there so yeah people just need to know that bed bugs in your home doesn't mean you did anything wrong doesn't mean you're dirty that's right? a big misconception with that's bed it. bugs. you didn't do anything wrong you could have gone to the grocery store mm -hmm. right all it took was walking past the wrong person or mm -hmm. picking up the wrong cart right so excuse me i'm joking um but that's that's the big thing is people need to know that it can be fixed it's not a, a life ending thing you just have to ask yep just talk to us. Yep. We're here to help. Russell Jenkins and ABC Home and Commercial Services. <laughs> what else, Russell? What else can we do? Uh, I mean, I think that's uh, I think we did a pretty good episode over bed bugs right there. Here's your pop quiz. What do bed bugs eat? Uh, 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 I don't know. Blood. <laughs> it's a good guess. <laughs> he totally guessed. He didn't know that. Um, but no, one of uh, two experiences that I've had with bed bugs was I actually was on a heat crew um, back in the day and was doing all the heat treatments at different locations. One of the cool things, yes, definitely more labor intensive for the customer and for the technician that's going there. But one of the things that I will say I did enjoy about it, it might have taken a big portion of the day, but we got to the point where it's like, hey, we're going to bring like a charcoal grill and we're going to be in the parking lot of this apartment complex for five hours today. Who wants to have some burgers or something? That was kind of fun. It had a, a little bit of a bonding. It's not all bad. Yeah, right? yeah. And there is a big chunk of the time where it's like, we're just waiting for things to get hot enough. So we're just hanging out. Exactly. I, I get it. You do this rush of setup, and then you're just waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting. And it can take quite some time to get just things hot enough. Yeah, 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 especially depending on what the, the temperature is outdoors, right? 100%. I know we... I went out for one where we set up, and it was probably like 45 degres outside that day. Oh, geez. And it's like, oh, well, you kind of have to have a door open enough to blast the heat through, and it took like seven hours to get things up to temperature. Oh, geez. And, so, and then you yeah. have to leave it there. Then we have to hold it, and then you have to take it all down. It was a long day. Yeah, I right? can see that. But you did it because that's the right thing to do for that treatment mm -hmm. right so we're not going to short it and be like eh maybe it got hot enough i always like that you know you have to go in and move things around while it's hot so you know we don't just want to leave the couch sitting where it is we're going to go in and flip the couch over so the heat gets inside and that kind of stuff oh yeah so while it's 140 degrees inside potentially you get to go in and stroll around in the nice heat and move things around because who doesn't want to move furniture in 140, 140 degree heat? Yeah, yeah, sounds wonderful. But remember, it's a dry heat. It's a great workout plan. It's a dry heat. Yeah. It's like you're in Arizona. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. But no, I mean, it's, yeah, we we want to help, right? Oh, yeah. That's, that's the big thing. And the way I try to teach any of our new people going out is essentially that, you know, bed bugs are a stressful thing. We always have to approach it with a bit of compassion in that, look, we know it sucks. Mm -hmm. And we know, literally, it sucks. <laughs> but <laughs> we know that it's a stressful position to put people in. And we don't want to advertise to the neighbors that that's what we're doing. It's not something where we're waving a sign around. We don't plant a sign in the yard that says bed bug treatment here, right? People don't need to know. We're here to help you. We're here to fix the problem. We're here to let you get on with your life. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, we just we just need to know if you need help. Oh, 100%. Well, and, uh, then another more personal one for me was uh, we actually had a hand with trying to get a bed bug dog that came and worked for us here at ABC. <laughs> um, he was a really good boy, but he was also extremely ADHD and uh, didn't really know how to do the separation between work and 
play all the time either. So uh, he ended up retiring at the old age, ripe age of three years old, <laughs> and um, became a pet pet for my wife and I after that. And so we took care of Frodo for he was with us for almost eight years. Um, yeah, he was that a was good boy. He was a very good dog, very good dog. But yeah, yeah. people don't necessarily want a hug from a big dog. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, and I mean, that's the thing. Not every dog's cut out for it. So you do have to be careful in picking the right companion for, for that sure. job. For sure. Yeah, I'm not just going to go to the shelter and pick a random dog and be like, yeah, this one will be a sniffing <laughs> dog, right? So not always going to be good for everyone. I don't know that I've seen a lot of sniffing chihuahuas out there. Yeah, no. You know, you need the right temperament. Yeah. You need someone who likes to work. Just a bit. Yeah. Just a So, bit. yeah, you, you'll see. You see a lot of labs and things like that just because... They're smart enough and, well, labs maybe not, but they're they're friendly enough that they can learn a trick or two and do what you need them to do. Oh, for sure. For yeah. sure. Frodo was uh, just too ADHD to do the job. It happens. He's a great pet, though. There you go. See, they still need love. <laughs> you still took care of them. 100%. 100%. But uh, thank you, everybody, for tuning in today to this, ha- this episode. And thank you, Travis, for coming today to talk over uh, bed bugs with us. Always happy to talk bad bugs. <laughs> well, with that, we want to thank everyone again. And uh, please like, comment, share, subscribe. Get other people engaged with this. We just want to have more fun, share some stories, but also give some information out to the public as well. Um, even go against some of the misconceptions. And so uh, we just continue to add to our arsenal of podcasts. So please share with everybody. Thank you. Cheers. And I hope everyone has a wonderful rest of the day. ABC Home commercial services